So now that the color is applied, um, we're going to do two things. We're going to pull this off because we no longer need it. And we're going to let these shapes dry um, for at least half an hour. The thing about this um, process is that when you apply these forms on top of them now, you don't want the black paint that we're going to be applying to bleed into paper that is still wet. And even though it's dry to the touch, you can see that this color is starting to dry, but this one is still wet. Um, I used also some paint that I happen to have in the studio. It's actually printing ink, and so that's drying a little bit slower because it's designed to stay open a little bit. Um, so I'm going to put these aside to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to clean up my workspace. And I'm also going to show you how to mix the black paint for the final um, pass of color. First of all, you need a clean working space. I don't know why there's still color here. Um, should be gone. All of these images are over now. We don't need our transparencies any longer. We also don't need these cutout shapes. I like to keep these things around, by the way, because they always come in handy for the next project. Everything that I don't need is gonna go off the table now because um, I need some space. I'm going to keep the water and the brush here, although this brush is no longer needed. Um, get rid of this. Okay, so in your, in your kit, you have these little mixing containers. And you're probably going to want to take a piece of paper just to prevent spillage onto your desk sur surface. Um, this is a little bit of paint that I still have left over. Use these to mix, um, mix a, a solution of this golden carbon black. Um, I have a big, big bottle here. You want to shake it a little bit, make sure that it's closed. And then add a small quantity. You really don't need much. In fact, I have a little bit in here. It's almost enough. Squirt a little bit of in there. Um, and this is gonna be your working solution. And then you can add some water um, to this. This is not exactly what you should be doing um, using dirty water, but it, since it's black paint, it doesn't really matter. Just mix it about 50 to 50, um, 50 half, half. Just mix it about half, half. Um, because golden paint is really intense and you actually don't need it as intense as it comes. As you can see, it's dried here in the lid and it's really glossy. That's because it's really high on acrylic and high on pigment. Um, and we can thin this down for our uses. And you can mix this solution a little bit with a brush um, this is going to mix fairly easily, and it's going to create a semi-thick, but very opaque color that really covers everything this guy is going. Um, so that's what you want um, for this project. You want a really um, well-covering black paint that will also um, work well, even if it's not wet, because what we have to make sure when we're doing this um, transfer drawing, like the biggest thing, the biggest danger is going to be for for these lines to leak, right? So what we want is we want a fairly dry brush but as the brushes dry, we still want it to be pretty intense. So getting your paint right here is pretty much
really important to get it nice and opaque so that it's going to cover these colors, not leak into them, not create a mess, sit nicely on top. I'm actually going to um, add some more of the golden in here because I feel like it should be, I think I might have watered it down a little bit too much. I don't really want transparency here. For this, in this case, what we want are nice, sharp, nice, sharp, dark lines. I like this paint. I, I've used it to letter um, on, on outdoor projects, um, and it really performs really well. It's like an amazing paint. This is, this is looking better here, um, if you can see that on the camera. Now I can create a line that's very thin. It's not going to, it's not going to stain, it's not going to leak. Um, it's not going to can go very fine here. This is performing exactly as I want it. And I can go a little bit drier for the transfer and still get a nice, a nice dark color. So you have your paint now, you have your stencil, and you have the surface on which you're creating your design. And now comes the, um, this is the final process here. We could, by the way, we could totally not register these. This would actually be really interesting. Um, just deciding whether I should do that or not. I really like the effect of kind of like analyzing these shapes a little bit more and emphasizing them. I think I might actually go with that. So it's at this point that you're basically, you're the artist. You can decide what you want to do. And I've decided I want to not align the background with the, with the figure. I still want to stay within the crosshairs of the grid though. At this point, I kind of want. I find this is interesting. This gives me some kind of like, this is interesting. And again, we attach the, at least with this figure, I feel like it's really important to somehow move her out of that green background. I think that's kind of interesting. And again, at this point, you're going to fix the stencil to the bottom page. And you're going to get your brush. Um, this brush, I think, is in your kit. It's the Da Vinci number eight. It's a really good synthetic. I, I really like these brushes, especially for the price. You have your paint, you have your brush. And I also think it's a good idea to have a pencil, a hard pencil, because rather than putting my fingers in here, and this is kind of need a little bit of nerves for this process. Um, just hold it down with a, a thin pencil. And at this point, I'm loading my brush but at the same time, I'm getting rid of a lot of the paint because I don't want it leaking. So I want it just, just about like this. I, and I can try a little bit here. If it's too wet, I'm going to take a little bit off. And starting here, starting in the corner, you have to start inking in these lines. I don't know how these are going to turn out. I hope they'll work. Again, don't, if, if it's too wet, you're going to have this effect where the color pools and then it's going to leak out. So a dry brush is best. This is much better. It's pooling here a little bit, which is making me a little bit nervous. This is going to take a while. Um, you just need a little bit of patience. You can also hold it down with a finger like this. 
Always work parallel with the lines. That's the main thing. Because if you don't, you're going to be shoving paint underneath your uh, stencil. I used to do this a lot for drawings, actually. But I used to use different paper and different ink. I used to use a German ink for that. And I never had a problem, but I'm not so certain. Every time you change materials, you never know exactly what the result is going to be. So um, don't lift it too quickly. Once it's dry a little bit, you can lift it. And you can see how the lines are coming out. These are looking okay, right? They're not going to get better. You have a little bit of smudging here, but these are nice and sharp. They look like they're cut with a knife. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. And I'm just gonna continue working on this um, for the next half hour or so. So, um, now you've spent some time coloring in this stencil and you've taken your time and you've been patient. <laughs> you do have to be patient for this. Um, it's dry, so we can take it off now. And it looks okay. I think it turned out good. Um, I'm gonna keep this stencil. Um, I'm gonna put it in a, somewhere where it's flat and I might use it for another work. Um, all you have to do now is slowly take off the drafting tape that is protecting your edges. Just be slow with the drafting tape. If you rip it off, you're gonna rip the paper, but if you go slow, it's, it's going to um, it's going to come off nicely. And most of the shapes, most of the lines came out nice and sharp. Um, there's a little bit of blotting, a little bit of irregularity, and if you watched my other videos, you know that I'm okay with that. This is not a computer-based image. This is an image that is handmade. And yet, we're engaging with these photographs from um, these mass, from, from fashion magazine, mass-produced images. Just to show you those again, um, these were just ads, Eileen Fisher ad. This is strange, I don't know, this is for, this is for tiles, but they're showing you the view up the skirt of a woman. Um, that's really sexist. Um, but she's in here now. <laughs> um, these are different women, you know, this is a very, these are very um, different um, images of women. And we put them all together here. The curves have turned out really nicely. Um, so I think, I think starting with this really helped me. Also, I used yellow and orange. Well, this is red, but I used orange instead. Um, just to kind of like preserve that strong pop art feeling that I saw in the beginning. And now we have these shapes and they're kind of starting to talk to each other. Um, I think this leg, which is slightly covered with the skirt, that could be done a little bit differently. It looks a little bit like a weird leg. Um, is repeated in the shape of the woman up here and that fits somehow. Um, fits male expectations maybe, uh, the male gaze. Um, this woman looks like she's kind of leaving and I think that's kind of correct as well. She has flowing shapes, it's like everything is dripping off her. Um, this woman is caught in between, I feel, between these images. Anyway, there's some kind of story here, and I'm not quite sure what it is, and that's what I like about it. This is kind of what we want to do. We want to create a story that is open for the reader, uh, for the audience, for the viewer, actually, um, to make up their own mind. And we're gonna talk about this in class, and you all will think about, you'll probably have different associations, um, and it's gonna be interesting at this point, now that we've liberated these images out of the advertising context, right? They're no, no longer selling us something. They're just shapes. And we've put them together in a random order. I had no intention with this. Um, and yet somehow it makes up some kind of story. 
Um, and it's up to you to read this story. It's a little bit like a comic strip, and we'll be working on that next. See you next week.